The next graphical representation that we're going to make is called a box plot, otherwise known as a box and whisker plot. The first step in making a box plot is ordering the data from least to greatest. And I just want to double check that I've used all my data points. I have 11 data points. And I have 11 numbers written. First thing we want to do is we want to locate our median. So the median we know is going to be the middle value. The middle value here is 63. That is the median. The next thing I want to do is I want to look towards the left side of my median. I'm going to pretend like the median doesn't exist and there are five numbers to the left. The median of this lower half of the data is called Q1, or the lower quartile. 61 is the median of the lower set of the data, so we call this Q1. On the right side is the upper half of the data. The median of the upper half is 71. We call this Q3. Technically, the median is considered Q2, but we don't refer to the median as that. The next, we know that this is the min. This is the max. Now we have the numbers necessary to create a box plot. Next I'm going to create a number line. And we want to make sure that we include our label. The label here is heights. So we want to make sure that we include the units, inches. I'm going to start at 44, and it's probably easiest in this case to count by twos. So 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, 72, 74, 76. Everywhere I see um, a spot on the number line that corresponds to one of my five number summary numbers, I'm going to place a line. So I've got my min at 44, got my Q1 at 61, median 63, Q3 is 71, maximum 73. So the whisker goes from the minimum to Q1 maximum to Q3 is the other whisker. Then the remaining lines creates our box. So what's nice is that each section of the box plot is called a quartile, which means that there's approximately 25% of the data in each section. So even though they're all different sizes, we do know that approximately 25% lies in each. So what does this say? This says that this 25% of the data on the lower end is really spread out. There's a lot of variability down here. We also know that the box itself, the middle 50% of the data, also looks a little spread out. Top 25% of the data is close together, therefore consistent, not much variability. So this is a traditional box plot. Um, next we want to look at what a modified box plot is, which is what we're going to be using a lot in this class. The only difference between a regular box plot and a modified box plot is we want to indicate whether or not there are outliers. So the first thing we want to do now is we want to check for outliers. So we know that our outlier formula is based on our QR. So our IQR in this case, which we know is Q3 minus Q1, we've got our 71 minus 61, so IQR is 10. To find the first outlier, we take Q1, we subtract 1.5 by IQR. You get 46. The other side of the outlier is 1.5 plus the IQR. We got 71 plus 1.5 times 10. You should get 86. So any data value in our data set that is less than 46 or greater than 86 would be considered an outlier. So let's go back to our data set. Do we have a value that is fulfilling either of those inequalities? Yes, we definitely do. 44 in this case is considered an outlier. So we're going to construct a box plot again, very much like we did before. We have our number line. We want to make sure that we include our units. This time, 
we're going to mark 44 with an asterisk or a star. Now the rest of the box plot is going to remain the same with the exception of the minimum. The new minimum value is going to be the next number in the data set. So we go back to our list, the next number is 60, so that is going to be the start of our box and whisker plot. 60 is the new minimum. Our Q1 is still 61. Our median was 63. Q3 is 71. Maximum is 73. By removing the outlier, you can see that the rest of the data is really consistent. This lower half of data, which includes approximately 25%, is much closer together than what it was originally. So you can see how that outlier really dragged out the left side of the box plot. By removing that outlier, we can see that the rest of the data is not as spread out as we originally anticipated.